All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Conference Carolina's Chat. So today I'm lucky enough to be joined by some of our athletic trainers who have uh, been through a lot over the last few months. A lot of different things have gone on. It's just been a different world. Today we're joined by Adam Smith of Belmont Abbey, Caitlin Grego of Mount Olive, Eric Gustafson of Juwan, and Anna Owsley of Converse. How are y'all doing today? Good. Great. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us. Adam, I'm going to start with you since you're – I'm going to ask – all of you are going to have the same question, uh, but I'm going to start with you as the committee chair for the Athletic Trainers. What has, since last March, when the world became, as we like to call it, the new normal, uh, what has the last few months been like for you? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Brian. And thanks for ha thanks for hosting this. I think it's a, a neat opportunity to share the perspective and, and uh, you know, kind of take some time for that. So. Uh, I would say that, you know, the, the beyond the initial uh, kind of shock of, of everything going on and everything shutting down and adjusting to that kind of personally, um, you know, once that all settled, I think we all kind of shifted into, uh, you know, what is what is the fall going to look like and how are we going to adjust to that? So I would say, you know, we spent most of the summer uh, anticipating all the different scenarios that we might uh, we might encounter and, and how do we how do we handle the students that, you know, have this or that or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, once the students arrived, you know, I, I'd say that first two, three weeks was really a systems test and, and, and really stressed our, our, our preparations and our planning and everything. So that was really good. It was really instructive in some ways. It showed us where we needed to make some changes and, and helped us to troubleshoot, you know, kind of what, what needed to get uh, adjusted. Um, and then now I think we're at a point where, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of a, a refining things for efficiency and, and and taking the best practices and, and integrating them into our operations and trying to figure out how to make this run smoothly uh, kind of from here on out. So, uh, yeah, it's been definitely been an interesting few months, but uh, a lot of learning and a lot of, a lot of new, new information, things that I don't know if any of us would have ever predicted athletic trainers would be responsible for uh, when we got into this profession, but certainly been engaging and, and, uh, and, and kept us on our toes for sure. Caitlin, you know, obviously every school is different, but the same question, what's it been like at Mount Olive? It, I mean, same with Adam. I a lot of the same thoughts have been going on. It's definitely a learning curve. Um, there is no right way. Nobody gave us. There was no pandemic class in college for us. <laughs> so every day is something new. Um, there's always a new directive out. A new maybe this way is better than this way. So it's us just learning and figuring out what does work for our school. Uh, you know, what works for us might not work for Belmont Abbey and figuring out what works out best for us and um, not having a path guidance to go by is not normal for us. Normally, it's, you know, you know how to prepare for if there's going to be a lightning storm. Like, that's normal for us, but preparing for something so abnormal, and most of us are planners, um, we've been thrown a huge learning curve and um, new experiences for all of us. So, um yeah, just trying to just figure out everything that works. Yeah, Eric, what is that, uh, you know, to use the same verbiage, what's that learning curve been like on, on your campus? So that learning curve has been very steep, and it's, it's challenging, right? So with all the uncertainty and with all the unknowns, the mentality becomes, what do we have to do to make this happen? We know the problem. How do we solve that? You know, and that's, that's really been what's laid in front of us here. And, you know, that's, it's been extremely challenging. It's been very stressful. Um, you know, especially with all of those decisions that you're trying to make based on information that's constantly changing and evolving, you know, that's it's very difficult to deal with and you're dealing with it all on the fly, right? So all of that has to, to, to add a whole nother stress level on top of whatever else that we have going on. But at the same time, it has been exciting for us, you know, to get the student athletes back, get them engaged, uh, get them back on campus so they can continue to do what they love. And that's, that's what has been rewarding through all of this challenging times has been unique situation working with a healthcare provider in Spartanburg. What's that been like at Converse? Well, so, um, so I, we, I work for Prisma Health, um, which is based out of Greenville. And so for the first three months of the pandemic, I was actually on night shift in the ER on weekends. So I got to see a lot of things that as an athletic trainer that you don't normally see. And then we were very, very thankful to start to bring athletes back on campus. Um, and then just like everybody else, it's, it's planning for, you know, a contingency upon a contingency. I kept telling our coaches, we are choreographing something and we're going to get the steps wrong at first and you're going to have to give us some feedback and maybe we need to go two steps to the right, 
and we went one step to the left and we have to fix it. Um, and so we just, we just have asked for a lot of communication from our coaches for all of those things that as athletic trainers, like Caitlin said, we didn't get a pandemic 101 class, you know, when we were in school, this is all completely new to us. I didn't expect to be learning about a difference between an antigen test and a PCR test and a CLIA waiver and all of that. And um, we are trying to be very flexible and our coaches have been very flexible um, and it's, we're working, <laughs> we're doing. Yeah, for sure. It's happening, right? <laughs> yeah. And so Adam, obviously you and I have been on a lot of calls this summer together, a lot of different things. And it's been a really unique to see the collaboration between all the member institution athletic trainers and the directors of athletics. Uh, you know, what was that like from your end to see everybody kind of trying to kind of find a common thread, but at the same time do what's best for their own institution? Yeah, that was a that was a really neat opportunity, uh, and 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 for a couple of reasons. The first one, it was it was good to get the kind of the take the temperature, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term, of of all the member institutions. You know, working with the athletic trainers in the conference uh, was really instructive for me on on what are the challenges that that everyone's going to be facing, like in a real way, not just like conceptually. Like we think this is going to be hard. Like you know, we know this is going to be a challenge here. So to be able to then take that kind of uh, boots on the ground approach back to the ads and and uh, you know, collaborate with that group from a here's the here's the sticking points to you know from a and then get their perspective from a higher administration standpoint and see where you know where do we need to make the the uh, accommodations and where do we need to meet in the middle and and how can we make this work for everybody because what I'm learning is that uh, as much as we'd like to all have our own little best practices and do things the best way like you know what's good for Belmont Abbey is also good for the conference and and. Uh, you know, if there's something that there's some information that we learn and, and it's going to help all of us uh, have a spring semester, like holding that to anyone, you know, anyone holding that to their self doesn't really help all of us. So, you know, I can't, uh, I at Belmont Abbey or anyone else on the call can't just uh, silo up and, and say, well, Belmont Abbey's got all, you know, we got all our stuff, right? But, but if no one else does, it doesn't matter because we don't have anyone to play. So, um, you know, try, trying to see that, uh, that kind of bigger picture and, and work with the ADs on that as well it has been really instructive and, and really a, a great experience. And Caitlin, you kind of alluded to it, but a couple months in or almost a couple of months in with student athletes around, you know, what, you know, what are some of the things that you've learned that are going to have you more prepared for what is going to be a, a crazy spring? Let's just call it what it is. What's going to be a crazy spring? Um, I think that really comes down to it's the ba basic principles of the communication. We have to work as a team and time management um you know the communication between coaches and athletic trainers coaches and the student athletes about what we're expecting of them and us communicating with the with the student athletes themselves about this is the time you need to be here this is the time you have to be screened this is the time you have to be tested and all that's going to come down to time management we have to plan every single day we're going to be having so much more on our plate than, you know, we already have. I mean, our plate is normally full yeah. and um, now it's overflow. Now it's like a platter, not a plate <laughs> um, of stuff to do. And um, it's coming down to that communication, um, especially with coaches and athletic trainers and understanding what we need because, and it's easier to communicate with 20 coaches than it is to communicate with 500 student athletes. And for them to communicate that directive and what the new rules are, or what time things are to them, and even teamwork within the conference um, that we can help each other because we're going to need that support, especially when we start playing games. Eric, kind of the same question, but more obviously more focused on your campus. But, you know, if you've seen the student athletes get back into action, what has impressed you most about their resolve and what they're doing to kind of put themselves in a better situation to compete daily, but more, uh, more efficiently in the spring? Right. And I think that starts off with their understanding of the situation, you know, because a lot of these student athletes, yes, they've seen the news and they've seen, you know, all the different sports reports about different conferences and teams and even different institutions and how they're handling it but honestly understanding what it is that we're doing here at Chuan University to help them be successful moving forward. You know, and a lot of that comes back to the resiliency. You know, these kids have to not only understand that, but they have to internalize that. They have to process that in their own way and understand, okay, well, this is what's best for us here on this campus. 
and then to have the patience to be able to, to see that through and be able to ride all these different phasing steps that we have to go through, you know, to its completion so that we can keep not only their team themselves, but the, the community and the campus safe. Yeah, and everybody's obviously talking about, you know, the, right, the same thing in, in collaboration. You know, how are you collaborating with your coaches and your student athletes to make sure that they understand what this all means? It, I think it starts with the coaches. Um, we've worked really hard to get um, buy-in from the coaches with everything. You know, we're talking about when we've got kids that have been quarantined for 14 days, you know, are they presumed positive? How are we doing that? We're working with the coaches to make sure that everything is sport specific. And so that when the coach buys into everything and we get that from the coach, then that's really easy to pass on down um, to the athletes. Our coaches have been great. You know, if, you know, our golf team traveled, they've got their, their spreadsheet, their coaches on top of it, you know, it's probably been shared 80 times, you know, like everything has kind of, it starts with the coaches and us having a great communication and then it trickles down to the athletes. And then we've been able to do a lot of things more online with the athletes this year with scheduling and things like that. We've actually switched and switched you know, to a few things that we've been wanting to for a while. And so we'll take this as a silver lining of all of this. Um, and it's really, really helped with how the athletic training room is run. It helps with how the athletes can get a hold of everybody. If they've got a question, it helps with scheduling. Um, and so some of the silver linings of everybody using technology a little bit more for things that maybe we didn't in the past has been just better communication with the athletes as well. Yeah, and I'm going to end with the, you know, the same question for all of you. And we've kind of danced around it a little bit so far. But what, what do the next few months look like for all of you as you prepare for, for the spring? Adam, we'll start with you. Uh, sending out my resume? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, I, would say, I would say at this point, you know, all of our focus is on the spring. You know, I know from the conference side, it's, it's uh, looking at what his schedules look like and all that. So we're really putting 100% of our effort into the spring right now. Um, I would say the, the, first, um, the first priority is to evaluate our testing solutions and, and how are we going to be able to procure tests and how are we going to implement the volume of testing that's going to be asked of us. And, uh, and kind of in the back of our head, hoping that the NCAA reconsiders that. <laughs> I think we're all probably aware of, of what's, uh, what the, the lean is currently. So we're kind of anticipating that. Um, you know, as I alluded to before, we're, we're definitely working out the kinks in some of our operational uh, changes that we've made and, and making sure really, uh, you know, when we think about, when I think about anyway, the, the commitment that we're going to need in the spring, a lot of it is time. You know, the, you can buy tests and you can buy, you know, all the supplies and the thermometers and wristbands and all the stuff you need to kind of uh, operate. But the time is something you can't create more of or get back. So how do we make our processes and how do we make our, our days of more efficient and, and, and optimize the time that we have? Because even a 15 minute test is still 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, and when you're doing, you know, three, 400 of them a week, you know, that's, that's a pretty significant commitment of time. So um, we're trying to figure out that. How do we organize our time? And really, I think the, the last thing I'll say is, uh, you know, we're trying to use what we've learned the last couple months <laughs> and, and not, uh, you know, not repeat the same mistakes and, and not get us into the same, you know, situations we were in before and, and, and uh, you know, learning the same lessons over again. Because, again, just with the volume of activity that's going to be happening in the spring, everything's going to be amped up. Games are going to be counting. You know, it's just every, the stakes are going to be higher and, and everything's going to be compressed. So. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're lobbying for decompression and we're trying to anticipate uh, where the, the compression points are going to be and, and plan for that as well. And, and Caitlin, you know, obviously he's talking about from his angle and obviously the Charlotte angle, you know, in a greater, in a big city area. What does this look like as you prepare for in Mount Olive, North Carolina? For us, I mean, testing is obviously um, a big deal for us. We don't have as many places that we can send people to. And we work in a community that's very small and doctor's appointments fill up quick for COVID tests and you gotta find the next closest one that'll um, take a student yeah. athlete in or find a place on a Saturday, um, which is interesting some mornings to try to find some place. But it's, it all comes down at the end, it's the basics. It's seeing what works now and getting student athletes into the habit and coaches into the habit of those little things that won't change in the spring. So they remember that when they come back at the end of December, January, 
to already be prepared and then we can introduce these new elements of themes and of the testing into their into their schedule and it's it's just about figuring out what's going to happen and planning now and looking at okay this is when we're going to have to test and figuring out what our days are going to look like how our days going to look like around testing and still providing care to student athletes um you know nobody knows how it's going to be truly in january and we can speculate just like we did and from March till August when kids came back and it's gonna happen all over again. It'll be a whole new learning situation for us. So Eric, obviously not too far away in Murfreesboro, North Carolina, but you know, what does it look like as you prepare for these next couple of months to get ready for January, February? Yeah, so all those same sediments are, are definitely shared here. Obviously solidifying your testing um, for, for competitions and what that means for not only this winter uh, but moving into the spring semester and then also to follow up with what Adam said, you know, making sure that your processes are in place and in those procedures that you need to follow through, whether it be on campus or off campus when you're traveling and how those situations are going to evolve, you know, in, in preventing those potential outbreaks on campus and then also preventing bringing those, those potentially onto your campus, you know, if there's travel involved, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, we are also focusing very heavily on our student athletes' mental health. You know, even though they've had a lot of their seasons postponed or taken away from them, you know, how are they processing these things and how can we not only get them back on the field competitively, but keep them competitive in their, in their own mindsets and how they approach their day and how they approach all these different things that all the other um, athletic trainers here in this conference have already, you know, stated that we're, we're having to make sure that we're not forgetting about them, who they are as a person, right? It's, it's yeah. them as a student athlete, as an individual, you know, so we can modify what we're doing to really hone in on what their needs are personally and kind of customize some of that moving forward. And that I think will help gear us towards what they need to be successful for the spring semester. Yeah, that's a really great point. Something that's definitely not being overlooked by anyone, but something that you got to harp on and focus on. And I know all of y'all are doing a great job with that. Um, Anna, what does this look like in Spurnberg? What does this look like at, at Converse? What does it look like with everything you're doing as you're preparing over the next few months for what's going to be this crazy spring? No, and we, with Spartanburg, you know, we've got multiple colleges in Spartanburg. So you have multiple athletic departments that are now, we are all looking at testing. We're all trying to figure out how do we not overwhelm the system? Um, how do we get the tests that we need? So testing has definitely been a, um, a real conundrum because ev every single one of these colleges within Spartanburg is having the exact same conversation. And so it's, you have a, a lot of athletes that we're trying to figure out how do we do this type of surveillance testing that's going to work. And it's, it's a puzzle that we are still putting together. Um, <laughs> you know, like with everybody else, um, you know, this is, it's like a, it's, it's a rehearsal for what's going to be in the spring. I mean, we're going to, you know, figure out hopefully, you know, if there's some things that we're doing now that don't work, we've got, you know, a few teams that are, are able to compete right now. And so we're kind of, you know, ironing out kinks, making sure that those things work and, um, you know, just getting ready for a big ride. It's going to be a ride in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> it is it, it, you know it was like you know like I don't know if you all remember the famous movie Parenthood from the 80s you know the, she, she says famously in the movie the, the grandmother that she likes the roller coaster because it goes up and down and that and that's exactly why we get into what we do in athletics and I think it's a perfect analogy for as you said for what the spring is gonna look like and that's why we wanted to have this conversation and I'd be remiss if I didn't think all of you and all of our athletic trainers in Conference Carolinas uh, for all they do, uh, you know, and I'm just speak, trying to speak for everybody in the conference, but they would say the same thing. You know, you do a lot. We know every, you're dealing with a lot. You're dealing with everything that makes our student athletes better themselves during their games and through their practices and everything they do. And we wouldn't be where we are in Conference Carolinas without you. So thank you. And we really appreciate all of you joining us today. And we will see you next time on Conference Carolinas Chat.